Thank you for joining us as we take you on a tour of the Danube River, reminiscing on the sights we experienced during our 21-day, two-week holiday. We travel through seven different countries and meander down the river, exploring the towns and cities, enjoying the histories related by guides and understanding how each city changed over a period of time to what they are today. Our tour begins with the long waits at airports. Will the flight leave on time? Have we missed the flight? Or is there a delay which may cause us to miss the connection? Anxious moments until we actually board the plane and find our pre-booked seats. We are off, Edmonton to Calgary, Calgary to Amsterdam, eight hours, and Amsterdam to Vienna. We arrive in Vienna and are met by our chauffeur and driven to our hotel where we'll spend our first night. Hotel Hilton, superb room, much needed after the long flight. That evening, we take a short walk down the street and find a shopping mall. Nothing remarkable, but there is, of course, a McDonald's, and the coin is euros. Then back to the hotel for a well-earned sleep. Early morning, we are picked up by our escort and driven to the boat, which will be our home for the next two weeks. We are escorted to our cabin, which is very well equipped and has a window which can be lowered to allow for fresh air and an uninterrupted view. The itinerary for the following day is on the television, the mealtimes and the trips that we par e selected are there for us to see. Our coach drives us through the city of Vienna. The roads are surprisingly wide and the traffic not as bad as I had predicted. The Hofburg is the former principal imperial palace of the Habsburg dynasty in Vienna. It was built in the 13th century and expanded over several centuries, serving as the winter residence of the Habsburgs until 1918. The Hofburg complex consists of numerous buildings and wings constructed in various architectural styles, including neo-Gothic Renaissance and Baroque. We see numerous magnificent buildings such as the Schönbrunner Palace, with its beautiful gardens in the foreground. The iconic St. Stephen's Cathedral, a Gothic masterpiece, has stood at the heart of Vienna for over 700 years and is one of the city's most recognizable landmarks. Monuments commemorating battles fought are everywhere. Statues abound, reminding all of the history of Vienna. Wide open squares enhance the beauty of the city. The Vienna Opera House reminds us of the musical history attributed to Vienna. Hence, the city is often referred to as the city of music, as it was the birthplace of renowned composers such as Mozart, Beethoven, and Strauss. The city hosts numerous music festivals and concerts throughout the year, including the famous New Year's concert by the Vienna Philharmonic. Our next port of call is Bratislava. In Bratislava, a mixture of the old and historic mingles with modern in a very pleasing manner and the squares adding to the attraction. Bratislava is in Slovakia and is a pedestrian-friendly town with many historic buildings. The water fountain is not just ornamental but serves a purpose. Birds can drink from the top, horses from the middle, and dogs from the bottom. How's that for ingenuity? We are on our way to Budapest, the name derived from two cities, Buda and Pest, joining to make one large city. We arrive in Budapest, the Hungarian capital of one of Europe's most diverse and vibrant cities, divided by the Danube with Buda on one side and Pest on the other. The city was united in 1873 when a newly built bridge connected the two. Budapest is an architectural treasure trove comprising styles from Gothic to Art Nouveau and everything in between. It is also well known for its hot springs and thermal baths and has a dazzling nightlife scene. We approach the synagogue to hear the tragic events which took place during the Second World War. Our guide in the foreground leads the way. Access to the synagogue is through an admission fee. The beautiful altar in the synagogue faces us as we enter. It is a popular tourist attraction. After Adolf Hitler rose to power in 1933, 
the Hungarian government became interested in making an alliance with Nazi Germany. The Hungarian government felt that such an alliance would be good for them in that the two governments maintained similar authoritarian ideologies and the Nazis could assist Hungary in retrieving land it had lost in World War I. Over the next five years, Hungary moved closer to Germany. This is the main synagogue as we see it today. Persecution of the Jews in Europe throughout history has been an age-old problem, and for us to get a deeper understanding, we have visited a Jewish synagogue, a cemetery, a memorial park, and are given a guided tour of the Jewish Museum. The Nazi occupation during the Second World War saw the extermination of most of the Jews from Budapest through emigration, ghettos, concentration camps, and murder. A commemorative memorial garden bearing plaques with the names of many who lost their lives. The leaves on the silver tree have the names of Jews who were murdered during the war. Pests can be seen across the river. Our guide explains the significance of the shoes lining the bank of the river. On the banks of the Danube, Jews were lined up and made to take off their shoes. Then they were massacred, their bodies falling into the water. Shoes now mark the site of this monstrous inhumanity and have been set in concrete on the banks as a memorial to the Jews who were murdered. Men, women, children, the old, the infirm, and the young, no exceptions were made. Visitors walked the path to hear of the murders which took place here during the war. The Riders in the Horse Show. Near the Balaton Lake. And this was the place, this exhibition, where a Hungarian horse trainer, Béla Lénád, and the Hungarian actress, Matt. So the actress uh, drew the attention of the trainer to this picture and tried to hold themselves outside in the busta, for example, in the big grass. And that was uh, useful to lay down like that. Onward to Baja, in Hungary, the second largest city in the county. Today's tour takes on a visit to a winery. We opted to visit the Bach Winery. You can't visit Europe without tasting the wine. The region of Villainy is known for its big, bold red wines, which account for most of the local wine production thanks to its sub-Mediterranean climate. The village is a charming place to visit. Rows and rows of barrels containing wine are stored in the cellars beneath the production floor. Of course, I am not the only one taking photographs. I don't think that even Janine could empty this. Oh, well, I guess I could make a try. That's better. We are now in the sampling room and get to test the final product. Looks pretty good. That's the end of our winery tour. Next, we drive to a grain mill. The park-like entrance is dotted with millstones, which have been discarded after serving their usefulness. A disaster overtook the mill, and the original mill is seen here visually portrayed. The reconstruction of the mill can be visited. The mill is driven by manpower, walking just like Goebbels in a cage. It's a treadmill and turns the stones which grind the grain into meal. Often, this was a job for miscreants as a punishment. I had the opportunity to experience the walking, not as a miscreant. The wheel turned very easily, but I would not want to do it for hours on end. A more modern system was the water wheel, which harnessed the power of water to drive the mechanism. The grain is fed into the hopper. The hopper delivers the grain into the hollow center of the top stone while it rotates, grinding the grain between the two stones, then emerging out the sides as a flower. The stones need to have grooves chiseled into them to enable more of a shearing action. Without this, friction would cause overheating and the grain would be spoiled. Today, we are traveling down the Danube and can take in the sights along the riverbank from the top deck of our boat. Or is it a ship? Lunchtime and everyone is below deck enjoying another sumptuous meal. Yes, guess who this is? Food migrates to her plate. 
We take a boat cruise at Kopaki Rit. Kopaki Rit is one of the largest natural wetlands in Europe, covering 238 hectares, and we had the opportunity to explore it by boat. A multitude of bird life inhabits this area with numerous cormorants, herons, and others nesting in the trees. Lone storks and herons patrol the banks, but hard to get close to without scaring them off. The branches are weighted down with the proliferate of wildlife. Our next stop is Novi Sad, and here is tomorrow's program. Novi Sad is the second largest city in Serbia, known for the Petrovard and Fortress, but we take a walking tour of the city. The market proves that it is a prime agricultural area growing a wide variety of produce. A nice sunny day to view the market. The variety of fruits and vegetables is enormous. As we walk the streets, we are invited to sample some of the local dishes. Souvenir shops abound. Statues of famous people, heroes of previous wars, can be seen in a lot of the squares in Europe. The walkways accommodate pedestrian traffic because of the wide open areas and squares. The squares are pleasing having covered stalls and trees which add color and ambience to the scene. Churches abound in Europe, mostly catering to the Catholic faith. We are invited into a shop to taste the wine and maybe they hope make a purchase. Sidewalk restaurants are an active scene where one can eat or simply get a drink. Eating out is a popular activity in Europe. Magnificent churches and cathedrals can be found in all of the cities we visited. The spire of St. George Cathedral dominates the skyline. And here it is in all its glory. We are going to visit the Jewish synagogue. It was here that the Jews were confined by the Nazis for several days without food or water and no sanitation. How can people be so barbaric? Our scenic spaceship will arrive in the morning at Novi Sad, which is the country's second largest city, a youthful place of music, art, and liberal freedoms. It is an ethnically diverse city, has a thriving contemporary art scene with several large-scale murals and hosts vibrant festivals, all while nurturing its rich 500-year history. Let's go for a walk around the city and see what Belgrade has to offer. The confluence of the Sava and Danube rivers, it houses the military museum, Roman Well, and offers a panoramic view of the city. Military equipment is on display outside the walls of the fortress. The view from the walls is wonderful. An old English built cannon is on display. The shopping centers attract our friends and shipmates. Walkways are kept in pristine shape. Janine finds the center of the universe. statue of Marshal Tito. Yes, I was there. Our coach is driven through the streets, giving us an overview of the city and the many ornate buildings en route. This evening, we have been invited to a classical concert at St. Sava Temple the largest temple in the Balkans. The inside is awe-inspiring, and we spend several minutes gazing at the ornate surroundings. Before descending to the crypt where the concert is to take place, we are honored by being the only ones to witness this choral extravaganza. The choir takes its place, and the voices and music is enthralling.
The acoustics are amazing. You could hear a pin drop. Our next port of call is Golubac. Golubac Fortress, built in the 14th century on a steep embankment of the Danube. Located in the Jerdap National Park, the fortress composes nine towers connected by ramparts and has been an imposing figure above the Danube for centuries. Lipensky Vir Archaeological Site, one of the most significant archaeological sites in the region, first inhabited 12,000 years ago. Archaeologists have found 136 building ruins, a central square, and fireplaces in each building, as well as stone idols. A reconstruction of the living quarters with the fireplace in the middle. This is what the fireplace looked like. Our boat passes us as we take in the view. I hope that it will stop and wait for us at the town of Donji Milanovac. From there we will cruise through the beautiful scenery of the Iron Gates, the natural border between Serbia and Romania. We pass through several locks on our way down river. We pass spectacular scenery. Next, we will visit Vidin, Bulgaria, an historic town with a medieval fortress between the borders of Bulgaria and Romania. This region boasts a fertile landscape where wine is grown. The fortress at Belogradchik in its origin. Now we see it, an awe-inspiring sight with its rocky cliff towering to the sky. Of course, it's there, so we have to scramble up the steep paths many with no handrails until we reach the top. Puff, puff. But from the top you can see for miles. Back on board, it's time for refreshments and a wee dram, maybe. Portobello restaurant at the far end with the lounge at the forefront. Looks like she might be enjoying it. Everyone enjoys the food with no exceptions. Everything fresh and as much as you want. Oh, the pounds we put on. And then there is the more formal dining room where our meals were served, the wine is poured and the day's events are rehashed. Next morning, we will arrive in Sistra, a wilderness park. A bus journey takes us to a nature reserve where we stop at the museum and view all the birds and wildlife to be found in the area. We take a long and difficult walk over rough terrain to see views of the wildlife reserve and the platforms on which the birds are nesting. This was disappointing, as even with binoculars and telephoto cameras, it was impossible to get close enough to see. We arrive in Constanta, Romania, a large city and port on the Black Sea. Some of the buildings, either derelict or in disrepair, are a legacy of the communist era after the Second World War. Romania, named after Rome, hence the statue of Romulus and Remus suckling at the teats of the wolf. Many of the buildings were built during the communist occupation and were poorly constructed. Constanta is a multicultural city where the different ethnicities mingle and are completely tolerant of each other, as shown by the close proximity, like the mosque in this picture, probably next door to the synagogue, next to the Catholic cathedral. A grand-looking Jewish synagogue dominates the square. Relics of the communist era. The old and the renovated. Muslim mosque. The Jewish synagogue. Catholic church. The Catholic church where confession is very visible a stroll down the promenade of the Black Sea, some controversy as to why it was so named. We were told that at certain times of the year, 
The current changes and disturbs the dead material at the bottom, which is brought to the surface, causing it to become black. Preservation of Roman ruins can be seen alongside the Black Sea. A beautiful day by the Black Sea. A statue of Carmen Silva, Queen Elisabetta of Romania. The Jewish synagogue. Is this Lorraine's nephew? We found her cousin. Our last sights of a beautiful country as our coach takes us to our hotel. The Arc de Triumph of Bucharest, Romania. Our last sight as we leave for the airport for our flight home. Thank you for watching.